All right, so welcome back to another installment in my uh, Odd Jobs vlog series. Uh, not so much a project video, but a video where I just like talk about what's been going on, projects that have been in the works, etc. I haven't posted a video in a couple weeks. Um, that's because we are moving. Um, yeah, super excited about it. Uh, if you've been following my channel for a while, you might have noticed that like a year ago, I think it was a year ago, um, yeah, a year ago now, I uh, was super excited that we were moving. This is, uh, this is kind of a long story. I'm not going to tell the whole story. Basically, a year ago, we found a nice property outside of town, still in the school district, so our youngest kid can stay in the same school and that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, that deal fell through. Uh, it was a, a good thing. Uh, that property ended up just not being right for us. And uh, the deal fell through. We didn't move. We stayed in town. And as you've seen in my videos, I work in a pretty small space. I've got like a one-car garage shop. And... Uh, I've got the bus in the driveway, a couple of trucks, a car. It's tight. Um, I drive the neighbors crazy. Uh, they drive me a little bit crazy too. And it's just, we're just kind of bursting at the seams in our house. So anyway, uh, we finally found a bigger property. Um, I'm gonna show you it in a future video. It's so cool. Uh, it's got some structures in addition to the house and stuff like that so uh, because we're moving I have been just spending all my time working on our house just getting it ready to sell um, the house is in great shape it's a cool old house like an 1890s house 1900 house cool house very funky you've seen it in some of my videos it's got a big loft space upstairs but you know like all houses it needs a few little things um, to kind of tune it up to sell it so I've been working on that like exclusively and I haven't really been making videos about it uh, except for one which I'll mention a little bit later um, so anyway that's what I've been doing and uh, I'm here to talk to you about an odd job a job from my past that I've been thinking about a lot. Like it's been completely on my mind uh, these past couple weeks as I've been working on the house and I'll explain why. All right, so uh, the job was uh, maintenance. maintenance. I was on the maintenance crew. I'm trying to remember the job title. I think it was just like maintenance worker. It was like maintenance worker one or something like that. Anyway, uh, uh, this was one of my ski area jobs <clears throat> and I had a couple of those. Uh, I think I've talked about one before and anyway, I'll mention some other ones. Uh, this is one of my ski area jobs and it was a maintenance worker, um, base maintenance. So uh, the ski area had like multiple levels um, of the mountain. It had the base with like the lodges and parking lots and all that facilities and stuff. Then it had upper lodges and uh, I was on the base and this was a job where uh, you had you, you first of all you got there at six in the morning it was, it was a 10 hour shift so six to four and uh, you got there at 6 a.m in the black dark and it was cold you know wintertime ski area stuff and you had your regular stuff snow shoveling um uh you know checking bathrooms things like that and then throughout the day different specific jobs that you would do depending on what you're working on so if you're putting in a set of stairs you'd work on that when you had time um, if it snowed, you would, you know, plow and then also cinder. Um, we put cinders out uh, in a big, big old truck, kind of like this one, but a, a four-door cab. You'd put a couple guys in the back, like shoveling cinders. And I was the only guy in the crew who had a license that wasn't suspended, so I was always the driver. Um, anyway, I did a ton of things in that uh, job, and uh, one of them was bathrooms. And it was just part of the job, but man, when it had to be done, you had to do it. And uh, it wasn't bathroom cleaning so much. When there was like a mess in there, you had to clean it up. But uh, it was uh, bathroom maintenance. So like a paper towel dispenser got ripped off the wall or something like that. You had to go fix it. Um, broken toilet seats. We actually got those quite a bit. You had to go replace or re uh, repair a toilet seat. Um, stuff like that. Broken stall doors. And... Uh, I was thinking about this because it was so crazy uh, being the bathroom maintenance dude because this would be like during the day. Um, people in there like packed, right? And the women's bathroom needs a new toilet seat and I would go to the, the shop and I would you know pull out one of the toilet seats and they were all the same size. I'd grab one, grab my tools um, and uh, go to the bathroom. And it was, it was one of those things that it was just so simple. Bang on the door, pop, 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 three times say maintenance, and then just walk right in. And this is a bathroom full of women in there doing their thing, but 
you just sort of assume that position of the maintenance worker. Bop, 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 knock on the door, maintenance, walk in, walk to the stall, you know, kind of like keep your head down or whatever. It's, you're not like looking around too much. You know, it's just a bathroom, but you know, you're trying to give people their privacy. Uh, walk back to the stall with the, you know, uh, tape on it, crack it open and get to work. And meanwhile, you know, there's people in either stalls and they're doing what they're doing. And uh, uh, you're almost kind of invisible. Like when you say maintenance on bang on a bathroom door and you've got your your jacket and this was you know i had like my uniform from the uh ski area um you're kind of invisible like it's assumed like you're just um almost like you're, you're a doctor like you know it's okay for you to be in the bathroom and doing what you're doing but everyone else it's not cool you know it'd be really creepy uh so that was that was like a weird part of the job um people complained about that you know there'd be like a bathroom job like oh i don't want to do it but you know it wasn't that big a deal it wasn't that bad um but i would say that in my experience uh ski area restrooms are among the nastiest and i don't know exactly why something about all that clothing and the weird food or something they got blown out quite a bit and in a nasty kind of way um and and i do not miss that part of the job it was kind of skanky uh other parts of the job were cool though, and, and here's why I was thinking about this, um, this odd job from my past uh, for this to talk to you guys about. Um, uh, in that job, you had to be a jack of all trades. Like, like that was the essence of the job. You know, one day you were running a skid steer, uh, shoveling snow. Uh, the next day you'd be on a four wheeler shoveling snow or just working a shovel. And the next day you'd be doing like carpentry. Um, nothing too, fancy but some light carpentry you know working with like four by fours putting in uh, gravel sidewalk containers and stuff like that uh, the next day you might be um, like repairing a toilet seat or doing some kind of uh, re you know lightweight repairs so like a broken door or something like that you were a jack of all trades and that's what you you had to be to do that job you couldn't specialize if you just specialize in snow removal Dude, a lot of times there was no snow, no new snow, and you would have nothing to do. So instead, you'd uh, have another job. So, so I was looking up this term, jack of all trades, and I was looking it up on the internet. And uh, so everything I'm going to tell you is probably bogus. Uh, but anyway, I was looking it up, and I think I found pretty reputable sources. And what I read was that historically the term jack of all trades has kind of changed over time, like the, the connotations of it. Uh, originally, a jack of all trades was someone who was like a real badass, somebody who could do like all the different trades. And that was kind of amazing, right? Someone who could be a mason uh, and a carpenter and maybe a farmer. Over time, and I think this is like a 20th century thing, uh, maybe late 19th century uh, thing as well, but certainly it's the case now. A jack of all trades, that term has gotten like a negative connotation. Uh, it's, it's a negative thing to be a jack of all trades because it means that you haven't specialized. You know, you're kind of like lacking specialization. And uh, people who know me, that just, you'll know, this just irks me so much. I kind of hate the idea of specializing in something. Like, like I think it's cool to be an expert, but the idea that you have to just inhabit one niche has just always bothered me. Um, I think we have more potential than that as people. And I know personally, I'm always drawn to new stuff. So um, this past week, working on the house, man, you gotta be a jack of all trades to work on that house. Um, I've been doing some plumbing jobs, light plumbing jobs. Um, I had to remove uh, this kind of uh, shadow peck system that I almost installed in the house a couple years ago uh, and never did, so I pulled that out. I uh, also was fixing a water filter. I put a new sink in, so doing some plumbing work. Um, put some waste lines in under that sink, etc. And then, you know, later that day I'd be doing electrical work. I changed our um, spotlight in the back of the house to something a little bit better and less uh, prison-like. Like we had this really bright, like Klieg light, like boom, light up the backyard. Put something nicer on the on that light. Um, also just changed out some light switches. I had some weird black light switches in this hallway and I changed them to the same color tone as everything else in the house. I've been doing some carpentry. Uh, I built a um, railing on our front porch that needed to happen. And I did make a video about that. I haven't posted it yet. But I made a video about that, and you will see that on my channel soon. Just a simple railing. Like, I think it's cool. It looks really good, kind of modern, clean. Uh, 
Anyway, I've been doing all this different stuff, you know, like landscaping outside. And, and I've been thinking about how great it is to be a jack of all trades. Um, I think the only job that I know of, it's not the only job, but it's one of the few jobs that really requires you to be a jack of all trades is if you're a handyman, um, you know, or handy person, that's one of those jobs where like to do the job, you've got to be able to do a wide spectrum of things and be an expert in things, but not necessarily a specialist, not just a welder or just an electrician or just a plumber. Um, but other than that, I think there's just so much specialization in our world and in our lives that um, we kind of under, uh, underestimate and, and underachieve what we can um, um, potentially. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, uh, that's my odd job story and those are the jobs I've been doing uh, this past couple weeks. I usually in this vlog also mention an inspiration that I've been drawing like mojo from lately. And uh, this might sound out there to you, but um, there's this guy, I'm not even going to say his name. I'll just put it right here. It's like Thor Vrnjongdal or something. Um, I can't pronounce his name at all. Um, he was a, an anthropologist, I think a cultural anthropologist. He studied uh, South American indigenous culture, and he had this theory, this is like m early to mid 20th century. I think it's after, right after World War II maybe. I think so. Um, I'll put the date right here. Um, uh, he had this theory that uh, people on the west coast of South America, west coast of South America, actually took rafts and inhabited Polynesia and the islands in the South Pacific. And it was kind of like an out there theory. Uh, he had the theory, no one believed, and they were like, dude, no, I don't think people took rafts from South America out to the islands in the South Pacific. Uh, he had this theory, and so to prove it, or I guess to test it, because it's not 100% proven by what he did, but anyway, uh, to test it, he went to South America. This is like a, he's like a British dude, uh, and he was studying in New York, New York City. Um, he went to South America, put together a balsa wood raft, uh, this is a raft where you get these huge balsa logs. They're light and buoyant, but also really big. Strap those things together, had like four or five buddies, different jobs on the raft, and they floated out into the Pacific to prove this theory. Um, I was drawing some inspiration from him just because I just love that idea of having an idea, having like a concept, and to, to test it and to prove everyone wrong and I guess prove yourself right you actually have to just jump in and do it uh, it's a little bit the way I feel about this move uh, we're moving to a larger property that is going to be just I, I hope I'm not jinxing it right here but it's gonna just be the best space for uh, projects um, there's room for the bus there's probably room for another bus uh, there's room for just all kinds of stuff and uh, not only are there like maker building fabrication spaces, you know, like structures on the property, but it's also bigger. I'll tell you more about it in a future video, but it's got, it's got room and potential. Um, it's, it's a move. It's like a step that Melissa and I are making that I think will allow us to just like have a proof of concept or to actually like, uh, have, have the ability to explore the things we want to explore. All right. So anyway, I'm pretty psyched about it. Um, uh, future projects, uh, the bus is moving. I gotta move the bus. Uh, it turns out having a big old prison bus next to your house is not like a great real estate marketing thing. Um, maybe for some people it would be, but in general, as a general rule of thumb, it's not. So I gotta move the bus. Um, I gotta uh, pack up a bunch of stuff and I'm still building this table. Oh. I was almost done building this table when we realized we we're gonna move and I uh, haven't finished the table, but it's a cool high table with some, it's kind of a, a metal wood fusion kind of thing. Anyway, I gotta finish that table in the next week or so and put up a video. I hope to finish that. Maybe by saying it here, I will get it done. And other than that, uh, the main thing is just packing boxes and moving and stuff like that. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next project video. I hope you get the chance to build something cool in the very near future.